So here's referee Brad Allen after the game to a pool reporter last night. Quote, number 68, who ended up going downfield and touching the pass, did not report. Therefore, he is an ineligible touching a pass that goes beyond the line, which makes it a foul. So the issue is number 70 did report, number 68 did not. Here's our officiating analyst, John Perry, to clarify the situation. What an ending in Dallas. Detroit has a two-point game-winning conversion taken off the board for a substitution, a reporting violation. Number 68 thinks that he's got the attention of the referee, Brad Allen, but Brad Allen is focused on number 70. Based on Brad's mechanics, we don't think he ever recognized Decker, number 68, as an eligible. In this case, and based on the formation that they used, number 68, number one, is an ineligible at the end of the line. That's a legal formation. An ineligible downfield on a pass. And ineligible to touch the pass first. And here was Brad Allen's microphone work with the call. touching by number 68. Of course, Dan Campbell, they practiced this play all season. They were ready for this play. He cannot believe that Brad Allen did not recognize number 68 as well as number 70. The key here is keep in mind, number 68 owns the eligibility reporting. He needed to take the time to get to Brad Allen with a little bit more making sure that Brad did recognize that he was going to play as a tight end. Thanks, John, for that. Rex, I'm just curious from your perspective. Do you think Brad Allen made the right call in this position? No, 100%. He, he absolutely missed it. 100% he missed it. And would we please stop blaming the players? The players did exactly what they were supposed to do. Every one of them, right from Jared Goff going over and telling Decker, go report. He went right over there and reported with that nod of the official. The nod, the, I think the official assumed 70 was because uh. he was reporting all day. That's a plan, yes. by the way. But the, where, where Dan Campbell failed is that he assumed that the official would have got it right. Why? because he went over it specifically with the before the game. That's what you do. The officials come in, you go over every uh, trick play scenario and all that stuff with the officials before the game. So he actually tells the official, we have a play where we're throwing it to Decker and number 68 and he's going to report. Yes, yes, and there's a grease okay. board and you okay. literally will draw the play up exactly how it is. You would, I guarantee you, he drew up the fake punt as well. Okay, yep. that, that the, the officials got yep. right. And you know what? This is a huge mistake. But the thing that bothers me the most is that we're, po we're putting blame on the players. Stop. The players did everything right. So quit blaming. Quit covering somebody's butt. Yeah, and I mean, tell it the way it is. Be a man and take responsibility. It's BS. And this thing right here, and oh, it's just a game. Yeah, it's a game that may very well cost them the second seed, certainly, yeah. And possibly the first seed. Yep. Yep. And that is a huge difference having to play on the road instead of playing at home. And, and to me, it's and, – so, and look, I love – John Perry, to me, is one of the best officials of all time. Okay? We're lucky to have here the guy's great. And in his eyes, he sees it a different way than I see it, and so be it. I'm telling you right now, as a football coach, I know exactly what the hell happened. Let me ask you this. Why would 70 and Panay Sewell be up there right next to him? Wait, you said that's the plan. Why would that be the plan for all three of them to go up looking like somebody else's could be reporting, right? Why not just send 68? That's what you do when you, have a, uh, when you bring an extra lineman in the game. One of them's going to be eligible. No. And that's why you come in there and you, you have those three guys. And that's what they say. Go no, report. I'm the guy. The only one that announced that he was eligible is 68, yeah. Taylor Decker. Then why are the Trust other me. two over because there? Because they come in. They don't need to announce it to the, to the uh, defense until the ball's getting snapped. Then they say who's eligible. You don't, you don't do this. is just a common practice that you do. And the thing that, that drives me absolutely crazy is, and I get it, I think, the guys, uh, the referee uh, is, is a human being. He made a mistake. All right, Own you're it. seeing Own a it. six foot nine guy. Right all right, he's a right big tackle, a six foot nine guy is right in right in front of you. All 
all right, but you didn't notice his jersey number. You assumed, assumed it was it. 70. And when you assume, you make a you-know-what out of you and me, and that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately, and by the way, this team, this game was over. They had one timeout, not three timeouts that was reported. They had one timeout left. Mm -hmm. There's no way, unless the Dallas has, they got a great kicker, but unless they have Gus the kicking mule, that game was over. <laughs> now John, Perry, John Perry sees that also as an illegal formation. Well, just well, based, based, off the, based off based off the Brad off Allen's the lack of reporting. Okay. Yes. Okay. L listen, I, I totally agree with you, Rex. He he assumed it. They've been running 70 in all game. They've been doing this with an extra O lineman, and he's the one reporting, and they're setting this up. He ran out on that play. Obviously, this was this this is the curveball to it, right? Like this is the play they had set up the entire game for this moment, and they got it dialed up. And Brad Allen, as 70 trots on the field, assumes he's going to report again. He doesn't even see 68 in his face, runs over. I mean, we saw the entire mechanic uh, clearly, uh, clearly botched in this case, right? How, how on edge are officials since the Kadarius Tony thing? Really, must they be? I mean, they're just having to get things right. And then now it's like, if you don't come up to my face and you tell me and get my attention, it's not going to get called. So this is... Things have to change here now because I have seen, I mean, I've been on like field goal block teams where we see people on and they have, they have to, and all they'll do, I mean, that official will be 20 yards away. Yeah, yep, that's yeah. it. Quick little, that's it. quick little this, you got me, boom, and they just go. We don't have, they didn't have, they don't have to go up to their face, but now it's going to be like in the, you got me? <laughs> yeah, I am yeah. eligible. Yeah. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. It's almost that's what it has to be now because they were right in front of him, Sam. Why, why else would they go right in front of the official? I don't need you for anything except for to do this. Yeah. And usually you've gotten, you've gotten this in the past. That's all I need to do. It's a botched call. You know, for, for the, the, the Detroit Lions fans, us as analysts, to sit up here and keep, you know, bashing the referees. There is nothing going to change. I, what I really want to so talk. What I really yeah. want to talk about is what I saw in the games prior to the play. You heard me say I'm talking about outside, outside. Jared Goff threw some balls, and they were, you know, as a professional quarterback, should have been completed. But what? They were incomplete. The last play, uh, the interception. So I, I, with with. 31, what, 31 attempts, uh, 34 attempts and 19 completions. That's not going to be good enough going forward. I remember last year, I asked you guys, wasn't Detroit one of the hottest teams last year at this yeah. time going yeah, into the month of December? Yes. Yeah. And I still think that Detroit still going, something like this will be able to fuel the Detroit Lions. But going forward, better play coming from Jared uh, let, Goff. Let me say uh, this about these two coaches, too. Think, these things just aren't changing here. I mean, you talk I, about clock yeah. management with Mike McCarthy oh. and the way that he threw the ball carelessly rather than running the football to take more time off of the clock. That's one. And also, Dan Campbell, you, I just – I love this guy so much because it's like – I mean, this is I – mean, so aggressive, so passionate and everything. But listen, you tell your guys, we're going to go down, we're going to go down and score, and then boom, we're going for two. Cool. That doesn't work. You're backed up five. I, I, and I'm like, kick it. I'm watching it. Just kick it then, and then let's play the game. But it's almost like he reacted emotionally. All yes. right? And going forward, I mean, those emotions have to taper down just a little bit with some of the great de the, those important decisions he's going to have to make. I'm shaking my head because I just don't see it happening. If you saw him crumpling up the paper at the end that we showed saying, I don't want to talk about, he is just an emotional guy through and through. And you get the good and the bad that comes with that. Let's bring in Adam Schefter for more on this one. What do you have for us, Adam? Well, Sam, this has generated an awful lot of reaction around the league, as you might expect. And I think teams have found fault with both sides here. They think that the Lions tried to trick the Cowboys and instead tricked the officials by sending three offensive linemen over to the official when they say that only one lineman should have been reporting. And then the officials did miss the call. Brad Allen got the wrong player reporting. And that's been a continuation of a string of high-profile misses from the Brad Allen crew this year. You remember earlier in the year, there was the pass interference with Marquez Valdez scaling. That was not called. The same Brad Allen crew in this game where the Packer defensive back goes over his shoulder. There was a pass interference call in Atlanta with the Saints. That was not called when clearly it was pass interference and it influenced that game. This is a roughing the passer penalty where Zadarius Smith was fined, but it was not called. And there's one thread that ties together all those calls. It is the same Brad Allen crew. 
time and time again. Now, you will see mixed crews in the postseason, but clearly this crew will be downgraded, and it will be a surprise to see some of them reach the postseason, but that's a decision that the league will have to reach. There still will be plenty of fallout from a decision that now very likely will influence how the NFC seeds are laid out. And in the second round, because Detroit right now seems locked into the third seed, yeah. last night's call could mean that the Lions in the divisional playoff round will be playing at the NFC East winner rather than hosting that divisional playoff game. It's a huge deal, Adam, and I think you said it well when you said they were trying to confuse the Cowboys and that, ended up a, confusing the official. That's and interesting there. With that, maybe that answers your question why Penn A also went up there. Totally. With, with oh, no doubt. And yeah, yes. yeah, it's like, so For you're sure. on defense. Like, which There's no say? other reason you're sending everybody yeah. over. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm just saying. But I got gamesmanship. You said I'm, man up, right? Absolutely. All these excuses, Brad Allen, officials, man up. All right. And we, by the way, would you want to explain why you smacked me in the face? Yes. He no. did. He did punch him in the face last night. That, that was, was, can we get? I mean, what happened is when, <laughs> when the incredible clock management by Mike McCarthy. When he, as soon as he threw that incompletion, I'm like, you stood Randy. up and I'm smacked like, me right in my face. He just gave a chance yep. in this one. I smacked just like Randy you right said, in the face. He wanted you to man up, Randy. Man up man for up. Mike McCarthy right now. Man, what a wild night it was. And